Hey guys, Chris from Axe Effects Tutorials here, and in this video, I wanted to show an overview of the Fractal Audio FM9. As you may know, I am a Fractal Audio beta tester and have really enjoyed working with this awesome piece of gear. In this video, I'm assuming you know a bit about the Axe FX3, FC controllers, or the FM3. If you know nothing about those, you'll still get a good idea about the FM9, but I won't be explaining basic terms and functions in this video. The FM9 is an all-in-one amp modeler and effects unit with built-in foot switches and is part of the product family including the Axe FX3 and FM3. There are nine foot switches and the size is very similar to the FC12. Just like the FM3, the FM9's Cygnus amp modeling is the same quality as the flagship Axe FX3 rack unit and it has majority of the features and blocks as well. As I mentioned before, the FM9 is part of a product family. The Axe FX3 is the flagship and the most powerful guitar processor with the greatest number of features. Compared to that, the FM3 is the most portable and most affordable unit in this product family, a compact floor unit with built-in foot switches and the same amp modeling quality as the Axe FX3. The FM9 sits in the middle of those with more processing power, I.O., and a larger size that hosts more switches than the FM3. But just as the FM9 is more powerful than the smaller FM3, the flagship Axe FX3 is more powerful than the FM9. So what are the differences? Since the Axe FX3 is the most powerful, I'll mostly be comparing to the FM3. One big difference is that the FM9 can run two amp blocks and two cab blocks in any preset. This allows you to layer and blend two different amp tones at the same time. Or make seamless tone changes by simply muting and unmuting the different amp blocks rather than changing channels. Another difference that you might have already noticed is that the grid is 14 by 6, the same size as the Axe FX3, and bigger than the 12 by 4 grid on the FM3. Another big difference is that the FM9 has four CPU cores compared to two on the FM3. And because of this, reverb blocks have a dedicated CPU core. This means that you can have up to two reverb blocks in every preset if you want, Yep, even both at ultra quality, and it will barely change the CPU meter since the processing is on a dedicated core. So in this preset, we have two amps, two cabs, delay, and some other stuff, and we're right around 47%. If we add a reverb block, that brings it up to right around 49%. So maybe a one to 2% increase by adding a reverb, but we're still at normal quality. So watch the CPU, we're at about 49. I'm gonna change it from normal to ultra high, and it doesn't even budge, it's exactly the same. Let's add a second reverb block, and I'm not gonna connect it, we're not gonna play through this, but just to see. And now we're at about 50, 51%, so again, like one to 2% increase with a reverb block. We're at normal, so let's set that to ultra high as well. And again, we're still right around 50 to 51%. So adding both reverb blocks, both at ultra high quality, barely uses any of this CPU meter because of the dedicated core. And we have medium room here, but we could change it to one of these cloudy types here. And it's the same thing. So really cool that we can have reverb in all our presets if you want and it barely affects the CPU meter. For the I.O., there are three inputs and three outputs compared to two of each on the FM3 and four of each on the Axe FX3. Out1 has two XLR and two quarter inch humbuster outputs for sending to your onstage monitors, front of house, or your guitar amp, either mono or stereo depending on your settings. There's also a quarter inch stereo headphone jack that uses Out1's signal. Out 2 is two XLR jacks and best used for sending a line level signal to the front of house for a fully modeled signal path. Out 3 is two quarter inch humbuster jacks and is best used for connecting to other pedals or amps or used for the four cable method. Of course, you can use the outputs in other ways as well. It really depends on your setup. 
Input 1 is a single quarter inch input intended for guitar with the special sauce that reduces noise. Input 2 and 3 both have two quarter inch balance jacks for either mono or stereo input. There's also USB for connecting to a computer, MIDI in and out jacks, and SPDIF. There are three total pedal or switch jacks compared to two on the FM3. There are some differences though. On both the FM3 and FM9, each pedal jack can host one expression pedal via TRS cable. So the FM3 could have two maximum expression pedals and no switches, while the FM9 could have three maximum expression pedals and no switches. For switches though, the FM3 can host up to two switches per jack with the correct TRS setup, while the FM9 can only host one switch per jack. So the FM3 could host four total external switches maximum with no expression pedals, while the FM9 could host three total external switches maximum with no expression pedals. Of course, on the FM9, you can do combinations like one expression pedal and two switches, or two expression pedals and one switch, and so on. But do keep in mind that the pedal jacks on the FM9 only host one switch maximum per jack. Those are some of the major differences, but of course, all three units share a lot of the features we know and love. Aside from the blocks, amps, and effects, the FM9 has 512 preset locations, eight scenes per preset, over 2,000 factory cabs, and over 1,000 user cab slots, foot switches with tap and hold functions and easy editing, stand-in switch functions, per preset switch functions, a Fastlink 2 XLR port for connecting up to two additional FC units, where the first one you connect is powered, so an FC6 or an FC12. I mentioned the secret sauce on input one for lower noise an 8x8 USB audio interface allowing reamping and playing back music from the computer, and of course, a computer editor called FM9 Edit for adjusting majority of the settings, presets, foot switches, and parameters. It has all of the controllers like LFOs, ADSRs, sequencers, and so on, all of the modifier capabilities with a single source that we're used to, and of course, it has auto-engage for your wah, or whammy or whatever you want to use that for. And then there's a ton of other features that we're familiar with from the FM3 and the Axe FX3. As for what blocks are included, I won't go over every single block in this video, but majority of the blocks from the Axe FX3 are in the FM9, except for the IR player, tone match, RTA, and vocoder. Majority of the blocks also have the same number of instances as the Axe FX3 as well with some exceptions being compressor and delay with two instances versus four, drive with three instances versus four, and pitch and synth having one instance instead of two. All blocks have the same number of channels across all devices, with most blocks having four channels, A, B, C, D. For the cab blocks of the FM9 specifically, there are two IR slots per cab block and standard or ultra res quality per slot. The amp blocks have all of the over 280 amp types, just like the other units. And of course, there will be firmware updates that bring new features or add new models and effects over time. Okay, so that's an overview of the major differences and similarities. Now let's talk about foot switches for a bit. If you've used an FM3, you know that planning out the use of the three foot switches is an important part of the experience. Of course, it really depends on what you need during a gig. Some people only change between two tones all gig long with just tap tempo and tuner, and, and that's it. So three switches are really all you need there. Others might want to access six scenes and turn multiple effects on and off. And while you can make three switches do that, having more switches available at the same time can make access to those functions easier. A popular way to add switches to the FM3 was adding an FC6, which gave a total of nine switches available at the same time. Looking at the FM9, we actually have that set up all in one unit now. The FM9's default footswitch layouts are similar to the FM3 and FC's, where each layout is sort of separated into different functions like presets, scenes, effects, and so on. So if you've enjoyed those setups, it is similar by default on the FM9. But there is also a second footswitch design that can be loaded from the hardware directly, called the OFMG9. It's based on the OMG9 concept of the FM3 paired with an FC6. In that setup, the three switches of the FM3 control what functions appear on the FC6, and many people really enjoyed that setup. For the FM9's version, it's similar, 
but instead of the left side three switches controlling the right side six switches, the top three switches control what the bottom six switches do. For those coming from a pedal board setup where everything is all in one row, you know, this makes a lot of sense. I'll be doing a more in-depth video on the foot switch layouts, but I'll just give a quick overview right now. So right now we're looking at preset switches. We have five presets per bank and we can bank up and down. We can jump to scenes or effects. So let's jump over to scenes. We click that once. Now we have four scenes. These are scenes one through four right now. If I hit this more button, it goes to scenes five through eight. So we have access to all eight scenes there. We hit more back again. <laughs> we have one through four again. And we can jump to effects here, jump to effects. We have drive, chorus, whatever you want. You can change these, of course, to whatever you need or make them per preset if you need to. More effects here, go back to the original effects and we can go back to scenes or we can jump back to presets when we want to change presets. So again, these three top switches control this bottom row of switches, which is really nice. So that's the Fractal Audio FM9, just a quick look. It's bigger and more powerful than the FM3 with the majority of the features of the flagship AxeFX3. Two amps and two cabs per preset, reverbs in every preset without using up a lot of CPU, more switches to change more things on a single layout, and most importantly, the same Cygnus amp modeling quality and tone. Now, if you need the most powerful guitar modeler available and can handle a small rack form factor and a separate foot controller, the AxeFX3 is the one for you. If you want to try out modeling for the first time and you're looking for a lower price point, or if your gigs don't have a lot of setup space or you're traveling a lot, the FM3 is a great choice as it has the same quality tones as the flagship AxeFX3 with some foot switches built right in. And now we have a mix of those two in the FM9 with power and portability all in one.